So Shiraz, thank you ever so much for coming out for a drive with us today. Well, it's and a for, pleasure to be here. for sharing this beautiful Cayman GT4. Thank you, thank you very much. And I know you had a Cayman before as well. That's right. And uh, how do you find the difference between the normal Cayman, which is a fantastic car, and the GT4, which is a bit more of a race track developed car? Um, are, they are they the same engine and same flat six? Uh, they are a flat. They, they are both flat sixes. Um, this car is got a 3.8 liter um, Carrera S engine from a 911. Wow. By comparison to the Cayman S, which is the next equivalent of the GTS, which is a 3.4 liter. Um, so increase in horsepower must be a decrease in weight. Uh, actually, equivalent weight. Equivalent both cars weight. are 1360 oh. kilos. Well, still very light. Very light. Very light. Very light. Very light. Which aids to the driving experience. I think it's a bit more than that, because I think that's the dry weight. I yeah, no, it is, it is dry weight. Yeah. It is dry weight. Having an Alpine, I'm, I know what about weight. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very key. Mine's 1100. Yeah, that was a, we're not that close yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is, again, pound for pound, one of the, the Cayman's a fantastic car, Boxer's a fantastic car, as we know. And one of the big advantages is that mid-engine layout, where you get the stability. Totally. Have you driven the GT3, and how does that compare with the GT4? Interesting. I, I, you know, this is a conversation that I have all the time. And actually, if you go onto online reviews, it's always GT4 versus GT3 RS, which personally isn't a direct comparison, actually. I think the GT4 and the GT3 would be a better comparison. Now, the GT3 being a rear-engined, uh, motorsport-purpose-built engine uh, car, which is also a 3.8, has a displacement, um, sorry, a power output of 475 brake horsepower. How do I compare this to a Cayman? A Cayman, I was able to, I feel, I was able to achieve the performance envelope quite quickly. This took a significant amount longer, so it's, but it's still it, attainable. It's, it's challenging in a way to how to use this car safely and with the speed limits, but actually you can still enjoy it at those low speeds in higher revs. Totally. And don't get me wrong, this car is born for track, yeah. you know. And you have taken on the track, I believe. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think I'm up to about a dozen actually, a dozen, track uh, a dozen track days in this car, and it has just been an absolute sweet spot for me. So yeah. it's a car you can drive to work, which drive, I do, drive to the track, yeah. drive home, and enjoy both sides of it without really compromising on either. You don't compromise on either. The only thing you compromise is possible uh, mileage sensitivity. Yeah. So as we know with GT cars, they're extremely mileage sensitive. Problem that I have is I bought the car to drive it. I bought the car to drive it. That's so, the thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's a shame that markets happened where garage queens have now appeared. Yeah. And what's the point of having a nice car if you can't drive it? And I'm mean, like this. I love I love Peter Fairbrand dearly, and I love the fact that he drives his car as a daily driver. Yeah, I think you were saying earlier that it's at about five thousand miles a day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and he said, how long does he have the car? Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. 